so I put my name on this unforgettable photo so it'd be a little harder to forget because if you guys are anything like me, you're probably not so good at remembering people's names. Also, if you're anything like me, you may have walked into rooms in your house before and totally forgotten why you were there. Or maybe you've done my favorite where you've gone on that long search to find your keys in the morning only to remember they're in your pocket. <laughs> you see, these senior moments cause us all to question our memories and maybe think, well, is there something that we can do to improve them? Well, science may have the answer to some of these memory problems, and it may be just as simple as running more often. You see, the surprising thing is that people who run tend to do better on memory tests, like those involving recalling lists of words or recognizing objects. But doesn't that seem a little far-fetched? I mean, we don't normally think of brain and brawn as being associated, so how would an exercise boost in memory even work? Well, some scientists think it has something to do with an area of your brain called the hippocampus. It's kind of close to your temple, but a little further in. It's a memory area that's involved in so many aspects of your life, from what you might consider the little things, like looking for your keys in the morning, to remembering significant personal events, like your first kiss or the birth of your first child. And you see, this hippocampus, the hippocampus, has what's deep inside of it, stem cells. And these stem cells are behind this exercise boost in memory. They're like little babies, poised and ready to become mature neurons dedicated to memory. And these stem cells are kind of acting like little biological memory chips, kind of like the RAM you might find in a smartphone or even your personal computer. And it's known that aerobic exercise and running boosts the number of these stem cells found in that area of the brain. So, I mean, you guys have been paying for computer memory this whole time. You can run and get your own personal memory for free. <laughs> but uh, the story's not quite yet complete. Currently, scientists are trying to put together a more coherent picture of how this might work by using experiments analyzing the brains of mice, rats, and relatively comparative studies in humans. Because how this might work might not affect you or I, but it could help people with memory conditions. So another surprising thing is that aerobic exercise seems to delay the onset of dementia. And it's also been shown that running seems to prevent the age-related decay in stem cell death. So if we can find out what exercise-related factors are protecting guys from dying off, we could potentially use it as treatments in order to help people with these memory conditions. But there's still more work that needs to be done, and it's still some time off. So and while we wait, I'm going to go out and run, because I'm really tired of carrying around these posters. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, that was really cool, uh, really interesting. Um, so this, um, and I don't know anything about any of that stuff, so <laughs> thank you. The, this, um, the hippocampus mm -hmm. um, with those stem cells that are capable of doing this um, plastic thing uh, and, and uh, becoming activated because of the exercise, is that, is that unusual, like in the brain, is that unusual that there are stem cells in the hippocampus or are there stem cells like in lots of parts of the brain? So in the adult brain, it's actually very, in the adult period, it's just very rare to have stem cells. I mean, normally we think of stem cells as uh, things that only embryos or babies have and these guys are things that can turn into basically almost any type of cell in the body. But adults, we actually maintain certain stem cell populations. So one population is what I spoke about in the hippocampus, and um, these guys can actually turn into brain cells or neurons, which help us with our memory. And it is actually kind of an odd phenomenon to have. So yeah, it, it is not normal, but we do have pools of them. So there's one in the hippocampus, you have some in your gut, and there's also some in your bone marrow, I believe. So it's all pretty cool to me. Yeah. Uh, so that was very clear, very engaging. I had a great time, because I to know nothing about any of this stuff. But uh, you mentioned running a lot, and it got me thinking, like, uh, running, how does that compare to swimming or, like, jazzercise? Or, you know, <laughs> not that I'd do that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. I mean, you should be in the field, because that's what we're trying to figure out right now. Right now, there hasn't really been a, a standard established for how to run a running exercise study. So what people have done is they've done a, different, a bunch of different types of things, but usually somebody will do something like they'll have participants run for three times a week for a month. 
Some other people will do four times a week for three months. But there's no standard that's been established yet. So right now, we're trying to figure out exactly whether or not even you know, stationary bikes or stair masters are equivalent. People have done studies, and they have shown that this effect does happen with uh, people who use stationary bikes and stair masters, but it hasn't been shown across all of the studies. So right now, we are trying to figure out whether or not that is comparable across different forms of aerobic exercise. I want you to keep going with that research because <laughs> I have the sad feeling that not being a runner because of bad knees, uh, is there any way we could find some of those little guys that are up there that would um, like really respond to yoga? <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, so we haven't really found uh, that yoga might stimulate these guys, mostly because it's really hard to get mice to assume yoga positions. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> nice. But what we have found is that there are other things that, that mice and potentially even people, even though it hasn't really been established in there yet, is uh, this thing called en enriched environment. And what it means for mice is that you basically give them a whole bunch of enriching experiences. So food every day, toys, everything's new. You're, you're keeping a novel environment, novel stimulus, and it seems to have the same effect on the stem cells in the hippocampus or the memory center of the brain. So right now we're waiting for studies to see whether or not you know, that would also apply to humans. I just heard you say I can have food and toys forever and yeah. remember everything. <laughs> Perfect. That's, exact, that's all you need to know. All you need to know. Thank you guys.